Hey everyone, it's Siskoid from Siskoid's Blog of Geekery, and this is a series I'm calling Comics Recollected. Uh, it's a nostalgia project, and it's not my idea at all, although I'm following in his footsteps. It's really Franks from the Idle Head of Diabolu, the Martian Manhunter blog, uh, and his own uh, vid series on uh, the comics as he started to collect them. And this is going to be exactly the same thing. Uh, we're going to go through, uh, in every episode, a month of my collecting comics from the very start, or at least the very start of my collecting and buying for myself uh, American comics, because uh, we're looking at April 1983, but in reality uh, I was 11, almost 12 at this point, uh, so I really started about 10 years before on uh, French bande dessinée, Tintin, Asterix, and so on, and French French translations of uh, American comics, which were really crappy and in uh, black and white. Uh, or at least the translation was crappy, but the the comics were basically 1970s Fantastic Four, or The Flash, uh, Thor, comics like that. And it wasn't until uh, April of '83 that I started really really getting into American comics in English, and although I'd seen, of course, I'd learned to read through comics with Archie and Richie Rich, which were uh, usually a family member would drop them off in huge bundles at the house, and this was my um, reading material in English. But in April of 83, I started getting an allowance, a very small one, and instead of spending it on um, candy or French comics, I decided to spend it on American English language comics. And this is going to be just like uh, Frank's um, comic reader, May, which that's what he calls it. This is going to be a walk down memory lane to see what I remember about those early collecting uh, days. And we'll see how I became, I went from um, total noob, a kid who just wanted to like the, the pretty pictures, if you will, uh, and to grow into the expert I, I purport to be today. So um, it all begins with this book. DC Comics presents number 59. It stars Superman and not the Legion of Superheroes but the Legion of Substitute Heroes and I will just look at the cover. It's uh, silly. It's Superman being exasperated by some ridiculous looking heroes and uh, I just I just had to have it. I, this is the first comic I ever bought. I remember the, the day. Um, I'd say it would be my own money, but really it went from my mother's hand to mine. I made the choice myself, if you will, and then to the shop clerk. The store was called the Tabaji Astral. It means, Tabaji means smoke shop, uh, but it was really a sort of convenience store where uh, you could also buy cigarettes and tobacco, and they had comics. And this this was one of the places I went to early on, and then soon enough, it I don't I don't think it was available anymore or it closed down. But um, the name uh, Astral Astral was pr basically in my town. I think a lot of convenience stores opened in the 60s, and they had that new age or even space race um, feel to their signs, which were full of uh, stars and planets and rockets, and they had names like that. And the Tabashi Astral was where I got all those very early comics, probably one a week or two a week, uh, as we'll see in the uh, in these this early part of 83. Uh, the comic itself, uh, DC Comics Presents, was um, the second appearance of Ambush Bug, uh, and the first really silly ambush bug story, uh, although he wasn't yet breaking the fourth wall and talking to the reader or completely upending reality and making jokes about continuity, uh, although uh, and so he's, he's a villain in this one. And the Legion of Substitute Heroes, of course, are uh, the the ridiculous characters that uh, didn't quite make it into the Legion. So this is really an important issue in my uh, comic book development. It's no wonder that today I'm still a Legion, a big Legion fan and I guess apologist since a lot of the comics haven't been all that great, uh, especially of late, uh, and yet I'm a diehard fan. And of course, huge fan of Ambush Bug. Uh, I've gotten everything he's ever been in. Uh, so obviously we're looking at comics I, I've, I got at the time. We're never gonna see the, the comics I bought or rarely going to see the, the comics I bought 
afterwards to complete the collection. I got a lot more DC Comics Presents from uh, the first two years of that run that that were prior to, to April 83. But uh, we're just looking at, you know, myself, m me buying these comics uh, mint or at least uh, fresh and new. So Ambush Bug, Legion of Superheroes, huge in my book, still huge um, in my collection. So, and this is the first comic I ever got. So uh, I, I don't think it's, uh, it's a complete coincidence. It's the story is by uh, Keith Giffen, both the, the writing and the art, with additional uh, dialogue by Paul Levitz, who was the um, Legion guru at the time, and uh, still until the, the, the very re more the most recent of uh, cancellations. And uh, I mean, I've reread this comic so many times, uh, and I, I've written blog posts about it. I'll probably put all the links. Uh, down under the uh, video here so that uh, if you're interested in learning more uh, you can and it's basically a story about ambush bug jumping on Superman's back while he's traveling to the future ending up in the 30th century and causing problems for the subs and for Superman himself um, I mean it's it's ambush bug screaming about the Technicolor rays coming out of color kids hands it's stuff like that uh, very funny still funny today and uh, one of my favorite comics ever. So the next comic I got was New Adventures of Superboy number 43. And the reason why it's so dear to me still is not because of the Superboy story, though it was fine. I did like the, the villain, Dynamind, who was a, a classmate of Clark Kent's and had uh, these, all these mental powers. And I thought he had a lot of potential to return and maybe plague Superman someday, but he never did. He never reappeared uh, after his, his two-issue storyline. Uh, no, that's, that's not why the comic is important to me. What the, what the reason it is is because of the backup. Um, which starred Chris and Vicky in Dial H for Hero. These two teenagers would dial up, on their magic dials, would dial up different heroic personas. And all these superheroes they became were characters sent in by fans. And the, the coupon is missing from my copy. So that means I either I sent something in, some hero co concept I came up with, or... Um, I t tried to or wanted to and just never did but I did cut out the coupon I just have no memory of if whether I did or not or what would I, I would have sent in but like every kid reading comics at the time I was creating my own heroes I was drawing my my own characters uh, not very well but I was so Dialish for Hero just blew my mind that you could participate in that way and I collected uh, New Adventures of Superboy from then on uh, and really stopped when Dial H for Hero ended. Uh, sorry, Superboy, but I, I wasn't reading it for you. Um, and I did go back and, you know, collect all those Dial H appearances after that. Now, the next comic I got was pretty surprising, actually, because I wasn't a fan of horror comics. I'd, I'd seen, there were a lot of uh, short stories in between, uh, or as backups in the French uh, comics that were translated from the American uh, versions, and I never liked those. So why did I buy a horror comic? Well, I mean, it's got a swamp monster fighting a crystal monster. Saga of the Swamp Thing number uh, 15. It's um, uh, it's a guest issue for the writer. It's uh, written by um, Dan Mishkin instead of uh, Martin Pasco, who was writing the series at the time. This is so. This is before Alan Moore. And um, with art by uh, Bo Hampton, Bo and Scott Hampton doing the art, which was uh, pretty nice and atmospheric. And it's, it does have, I seem to remember, a, a pretty um, shocking shot of a man being turned into crystal and then his head being uh, exploded. So uh, I guess that's cool for kids. But uh, from my recollection, I think I got this comic for my kid brother, who was six years younger than me at the time, so like five. And I was, I mean, I was interested in getting him into... Um, reading comics as well, probably learning English through it. And um, he seemed interested in that particular cover. Monsters and my brother, yeah, that makes a little more sense. He was less a superhero fan than a monster fan. I think he was a more or less a monster fan, a dinosaur fan at the time. So that would made, have made sense. And I would have probably uh, read and translated for him uh, this, this, this story and probably other stories as well in the upcoming months. So uh, and I do remember buying a, an Alan Moore issue later um, for, for my brother and to, to keep him uh, included in that hobby 
uh, but it was it was an Alan Moore issue. It was really creepy, um, so we never touched it again. It wasn't it it wasn't uh, made for a five or six year old. So and it wasn't even made for an eleven or twelve year old, which I was. Um, so this issue of the Saga of the Swamp Thing was my first and um, last for a while, and then another one. And ooh. so it really Swamp Thing is something I rediscovered when I was in college. So not at this point. World's Finest Comics, number 293, Superman and Batman face off against Null and Void, these really obscure villains today, but I loved them, probably because they were among my very first, and just look at that cover by uh, Ed Hannigan, just beautiful, they've got an unusual look, the, the pink and blue splatter uh, twirling around, and um, they've got really unusual powers too, so... I like these characters a lot and did a piece on my blog, or several pieces, chronicling every appearance. There are very few, but very, all their appearances. Uh, so um, an awesome duo for me. Uh, I'll leave the link uh, down below for uh, if you want to learn more about them, because they haven't reappeared since then. And really, that was it for comics that were released in April of 83 and that I bought on that month. But there was one other comic I bought that month, which was still on the racks and is actually from March of 83. Uh, and that's Fury of Firestorm, The Nuclear Man, number 13. And I really hadn't realized that uh, Firestorm was one of the very first comics I picked up in the original English uh, until I looked at the, the timeline of the releases of the, of the day. Uh, but there it is, and I'm sure that's, uh, that's going to tickle Shag from Firestorm fan. Uh, but yeah, Firestorm was one of my very first, and it didn't make me pick up number 14 uh, simply because it was the the second part of a two-part uh, two two-issue story about Firestorm uh, fighting the hyena and being turned into a war hyena. So he's not really himself. I have no context for who the character is. Uh, he's uh, he's basically a werewolf uh, with a ghostly the ghostly head of Martin Stein talking to him. Uh, so, didn't really uh, hook me in, but a few months later, I would start picking up Fury of Firestorm with number 16, and then for a good while. So, uh, at the time, this was it. It has a dubious honor in my collection, and um, I it's because it's the most mutilated comic uh, probably in there. Uh, my cat at the time took a huge bite out of the upper right hand corner so not just the cover it's it's got damage through a number of pages I'll probably try I'll try to scan it and put it on my blog in connection to this video so that you can see what kind of damage happened to it and I never replaced it never bought a new issue uh, or a, uh, of this comic uh, it's mangled it's ugly uh, but it's for sentimental sentimental reasons that's how I like to remember it and like to, to have it um, of course, that cat's gone, it's long gone, uh, but his mark still remains. And that's it for April of 1983. Very few comics at this point, but of course my comic book collection will, will balloon. It'll grow exponentially as uh, these episodes will attest. Next up, May 83, we'll add more titles, more superheroes will be discovered uh, by a young ciscoid. If you want to read more about my comic book journey, uh, which is ongoing, of course, you can uh, always go to ciscoid.blogspot.com. That's Ciscoid's blog of geekery, where um, not just comics, but loads of geek stuff uh, is discussed daily. And uh, all other links, uh, sites, uh, and sources that have been mentioned uh, are linked below under this video. For now, this is Ciscoid uh, saying goodbye. And I'll see you back again in time.